Alrighty, it is actually May 1st, 2013. Daily Bible reading, the book of Acts with Pastor Jeff. Today we are in chapter 4. Let's begin now. There we go. And uh, uh, I've been really, really, really enjoying uh, the reading of the book of Acts because it just reminds us of um, the, the early church and how we as the church today uh, should be operating. Uh, last night during um, a little time of um, a pal talk, somebody came in and said they were writing a book about uh, how the church is to operate in today's world. I said there was already a book. It's called the Bible. And he left. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Amen? All right. Verse uh, 1 in chapter 4. As they And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. And being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead, they laid hands on them and put them put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even tide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. Verse 5. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were the, of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst they asked, by what power or by what name have ye done this? And they already knew what name they were calling and by what power because they saw it. They heard the message. The, the, the message was spread across all of Jerusalem about what had happened. Verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done unto this to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man, verse 14, which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that it spread no further. Verse 17. Among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no more in this name. Imagine that. And they called them and commanded not, 
or commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For a week, listen, verse 20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Highlight that, please, in your, in your book. Highlight that. Because this is exactly what you and I are to have in our minds. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. We're not supposed to speak things that we haven't seen nor heard. We're supposed to speak the things that we have seen and heard. Amen. So, in verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing they, how they might punish them. Because of the people, for all men glorified God for, what, for that which was done. For the man was about four, above 40 years old, on whom this miracle of healing was shown. Verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company, amen, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hath made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of thy servant David David has said why did the heathens rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord against his Christ for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus whom thou has anointed by uh, has anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before be done and now verse 29 and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness hallelujah verse 32 are we having fun yet and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul hallelujah neither said any of them that ought of thing of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things in common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them, and brought the price of this of the things that were sold. And they laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he hath need. And Joas, uh, uh, who by the apostles were surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is amazing reading, folks. This is absolutely a powerful verse or powerful chapter. 
and as we do on this we always you know read a little bit about uh, what we just the summing up of the chapter in going over the last two chapters where we meet or where we met with so many good things that the apostles did I wonder what was become of the scribes and Pharisees and chief priests that they did not appear to contradict or oppose them as they had used to th treat Christ himself hmm. surely they were so confounded at first with the pouring out of the spirit that they were for a time struck dumb but I want I find that I find we have not lost them their forces rally again and here we have an encounter between them and the apostles for from the beginning of the gospel met with opposition here number one Peter and John are taken up upon a warrant from the priest and committed to jail two they are examined by the a committee of the great Sanhedrin imagine that three they bravely avowed what they had done and preached Christ into their persecutors persecutors four um, oops hold on <laughs> oh, I love it their persecutors being unable to answer them enjoined them silence threatening them if they go on to preach the gospel and so dismiss them five they apply to God by prayer for the further operation of that grace which they had already experienced six God owns them amen somebody God owns them both outwardly and inwardly by manifest tokens of his presence with them seven the believers had their hearts knit together in holy love and enlarged their charity to the poor and the church flourished more than ever to the glory of Christ amen you see here are a few things I want to point out before we wrap this up today uh, number one the boldness of the apostles after being threatened you see today is Christianity today is common Christianity when we're threatened we back up the more we're threatened the more we back up or we start to bend over and you know kowtow to the masses of people because it's in it's inconceivable that we would you know oppose them brothers and sisters in Christ listen to me for just a moment in my extreme folly this morning we all know the day is approaching in which the church is going to witness a onslaught of persecution and yet you and I as believers must stand up and raise the voice of the power and authority of Christ not yours not mine but his and the proof of that is where no matter what we speak no matter what we herald out what no matter how much we scream and holler if we are speaking according to the authority of Christ it will prick their heart and they will despise it and threaten us if they appreciate your religion if they appreciate that you are even a Christian and they 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 respect you because you're kind and loving and gentle and peaceful and you just get along with everybody beware because you have been compromised join us tomorrow for chapter 5 
This is Pastor Jeff. Once again for May 1st, 2013. We will continue on tomorrow, May 2nd, with Chapter 5. God bless and have a good day. Amen. Amen. Amen.